Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to go over how to create UVs for your CAD models. Um, I'm going to begin today with uh, a program application called MOI, M-O-I, Moment of Inspiration. Um, the first step to exporting, you, you know, creating UVs for your CAD models is actually use a tool that has a good UV export. MOI is an awesome tool to use um, for that uh, because it can import a step file and then uh, from your step file, it's going to generate some basic UVs when you go and export the mesh. So file export, and if I select my model and it, you know give it a place to go, so let's just say test here, uh, model. And you can see it's going to remesh really nicely. You've got some settings to set the density and all that, which is great. So that's a good application. Also, um, Fusion 360 is another great application. But these are really the best I've, I've found. And I've uh, done this at um, places like Apple um, to render things that you see in Tim Cook show on stage, for example. Um, so that's a, that's a good tip there. Now, the next thing I do for UVs is we're going to get a texture to be able to um, determine whether we have good UVs or not so and determine the direction for our UVs so I'm just going to search for something that you can all search for um, sandy beach texture I'm going to just click on something that's got I want something that has a combination of detail and some directionality to it so this this little texture here is fine I'm just going to save this texture uh, somewhere and let's see here this is fine go beach that's fine and then the next thing we're going to do this tutorial today is in maya so i've already got the model in here the uvs that came out of moi are are fine uh you know i can unwrap these to um just just adjust them a bit more but I'm going to start off as if you had no UVs at all. So you came from some random CAD package that didn't give you good UVs. So I can select these UVs uh, and then just go and uh, delete them. And so we've got a clean mesh. And now what I'm going to do is delete the history, you know, edit, delete by type history. I've got, I've got buttons for these things, but you guys may not. Um, and we're going to go to the material for this object. So just selecting the object, press control, tr control A to bring up the attribute editor, go to the material, and then we can go and click and browse, add a 2D texture node, and then press file. It's going to allow you to um, import the, um, the texture map that we downloaded. So, and then if I press six in the viewport, nothing happens. It doesn't show anything because there's no UVs. So the first thing I do to make sure that all of these little polygons have UVs um, is to project UVs on everything. So I'm, I just uh, I'm just go back to um, right click on the object and or sele select the object. I'm just gonna do that again. Select the object, go to faces, right click and go to faces. Drag a big box on everything. And then uh, I just go to UV and we're going to just do a uh, planar project and we're going to make sure in the settings. So we went to planar project in the option box next to it. So UV planar option box. Um, make sure that the project from is set to, to camera. I believe by default it's not select, set on camera. So this is going to allow you to kind of get in the best possible view. In this case, we just want a three quarter view. And I'm going to say to uh, keep the image uh, and width and height ratio. And we're going to press apply. So you can see when I press apply, <clears throat> it, it's going to project the UVs from my camera view. And um, at least this, this lets me know, first of all, that there are UVs on all the faces of my model. And that's what I want. I don't want to have any missing uh, faces. So the next problem is how do you get the text the the um, the texture to go in the right direction? So if you were using let's just say a wood texture or a um, brushed um, steel or a carbon fiber or something like that, the text the UV uh, orientation is going to be important because you want the texture to flow in a certain way. 
So first we need to think about like how we want the textures to flow. And so let's say on this, this boxy body side here, I want the texture to flow all the way around um, these elements here. So what I need to do is select the faces that are um, just around the body of the, uh, this, this, uh, this form here that I'm using. And so I'm just gonna go in and I go into the wireframe mode just so I can see what I'm doing. And you can you know, click and just drag a box through. And if you need to add to the selection, hold down shift and control and then just add to your selection and drag big boxes through everything. And so now we've got, and we can just go around and check what we've got selected. So everything here will be able to unwrap. And for this particular type of unwrap here, I'm gonna use the cylindrical unwrap. So it's like wrapping a cylinder around this entire boxy form and that's gonna lay those UVs out flat over here. So we're gonna dim the image here and you can see it a bit better. So UVs, and we're just gonna go cylindrical. And so now I've got those UVs unwrapped. And if I move it up here, they're all unwrapped this way. If we go and check our texture. So now that, that texture is going right around the body of the of the camera there, which or this, this form that we've got. So now um, <clears throat> we're gonna use the fact that we've chipped that off to be able to select these these other shells here they're called these shells or islands uv islands uh, and these are just a collected set of uh, faces so i can go in and select this piece for example just right click and say shell and then select that piece um, we can select this piece and you want to be able to to have these you want to select these pieces in in a, in a form that can unwrap in a friendly way um, so let me just show you what I mean by that. So with this piece here, um, we, may, we may want the sand or this uh, sand texture to wrap around this barrel that way. So if I were just to keep this chunk the way it is and then just select the UVs, right click, select the UVs, and then go to modify and unfold, um, it's gonna unfold it properly, but the orientation of the sand is not gonna be in a way that we want it to be, for example. Um, and I'm just gonna, let me turn up the amount of number of repeats on my sand. So delete the history, select the object, go into the attribute, editor, push the arrow, and then we're gonna click the placement 2D icon and just turn up the number of repeats on the texture. So I'm just gonna put it at four and four, and let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's good. So now I can, you know, I can see how the texture is going across. So I want, in this case of this, this piece that's popping out here, I want the texture to wrap around this way. So in order to do that, I need to uh, create a selection uh, that goes around the boundary. Now, the reason why I brought this model in and as you can notice it's triangulated. Um, when you, um, when models come in from CAD, they can be triangulated like this. Um, for film and television, we're creating models a lot of the time we keep them in quads and this kind of goes back to historical reasons to want to um, be able to render a model smoothly or as a sub d but also one of the advantages back in the day was um, you could you know these tools were created so the, on quad models you can double click and select entire loops around an object whereas like on a triangulated mesh you you can't do that you know so you can't double click and select around um, so it makes it a little bit more challenging to actually select these pieces of UVs, but there are new tools now. So if you go on to uh, vertex mode, um, there is a, a tool to select the um, shortest path. I have it on my menu up here, but if you just go to select and shortest path tool, so select and shortest path tool, it asks you to click on two uh, vertices. So while you're in uh, vertice, vertex mode, you can select, and then if you notice when you shift select again, it's gonna automatically select the edges in between those points. And so I'm just gonna keep clicking and going around this, this cylinder here and um, to um, highlight some edges that we can then cut and 
So I'm just going to go ahead and select this. And now you can see that I've, I've this is kind of highlighted with this orange color. It's going all the way around. And you can see it in the UV texture editor. I've got those there. So now I can go to cut this cut and sew and just cut the UVs there. I didn't want to cut these, so I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to right click, go to edge, make sure that these are selected. Let's go to my edge mode. No, oh, it's not doing it. Make sure these are not. I'm going to say so on these things. Yeah, there we go. So if I go ahead and right click, go to shell, I can select this shell now and this separately. So now that I've got this little donut selected, I can do a similar cylindrical unwrap. So just under UVs, we can go to cylindrical and go ahead and run the command. And you notice that it's gonna be laid out in a really strange way. And that's because the cylindrical operator is oriented in the wrong direction. It's kind of going around the wrapping around the Y axis and it needs to be wrapping around the Z axis. So with it still active, you can rotate the um, this this tool, this projection tool. So we can go ahead and rotate it. So we're going to type in, let's say 90 on, actually we want X, actually 90 on X. And let's see here. So now with 90 on, on X, we've wrapped the texture around and you notice that the UVs are wrapped around this way, which is good for what we are wanting in this particular case. And these uh, sort of elements here are uh, the, the sort of the orientation of this shell is okay. Um, and it's just the scaling that is not okay. So we'll have to, we'll go back and fix the scaling after all, all we finish with all these pieces. Uh, on the bottom here, I'm just gonna go down to the bottom and I'm gonna orient the camera in a nice, you know, looking dead onto this shape and just go to UVs and then plane our project. Move that off to the side, right click, select the UVs and then modify unfold to make sure that um, it's everything's unwrapped uh, properly. Um, with the unfold tool, I'm just using the new unfold 3D uh, option. And so for the next part, we want to make sure these UVs here are unwrapped uh, properly. So um, we're going to want, it's a similar scenario. I want the, the texture around this boxy part to be going in a particular direction. So what I'm going to do here is to <clears throat> see if I can get into a, um, I'm going to get into a particular view. So I'm going to go hit the space bar, get in the front view and go into wireframe mode. I'm just going to select, instead of using the uh, shortest path tool, I'm just going to select all the faces going through this way. And you could have, in the case that we did before, I could have done this similar thing. I just wanted to show you that tool because a lot of times you don't have the luxury of like, you know, the model being aligned on these axes. So in those cases, shortest path, shortest path works well. Um, just pressing the number five key to yeah, I'm just going to keep those faces. That's fine. Just double checking my selection. Then I'm going to go back in and UVs and we're going to go cylindrical unwrap again. This time wrapping around, uh, unwrapping in the Y direction works fine. And you can see the piece here. And now we're going to go in and let's see what's left here. So we've got this piece on top, this piece here. <clears throat> and these we may not even need to project, but let's see, I'm going to go and project them anyway. So select this last remaining piece when you go on top, UVs, planar project, drag that off, and then drag this 
just like this face on top here. UVs, planar project from camera. I'm always using a camera so I can determine where the projection happens. And on these pieces, now we're gonna right click, select all their UVs, and then go to modify uh, unfold. Just make sure that piece is all unfolded. Hit the G key again to repeat the command. Uh, those UVs, and we're gonna go try it on these as well. So if you do it on, on these guys here, it's gonna unwrap it and it's trying to loop it around and make it connect again. So just leave those the way they are and we'll just manually stretch them out to be the right proportion. So the next step is to get the scaling uh, correct. And you can use the tools that are in here to adjust scaling. Um, so if you select all of the UVs at this point and we're gonna, if we went to modify and then layout, um, there are options in the layout tool to do a pre-scaling or a pre-rotation. So in this case, uh, we're saying that translating the shells are fine. Uh, we don't want to rotate them in this case, uh, but I do want to pre-scale and preserve this 3D ratios that needs to be on. And so we'll press that and let the computer think about how to rescale everything. And it's done a pretty good, pretty good job. So what that does is make sure that the the tiling matches on all of these um, shells and that looks like it's it's pretty decent uh, so far there um, and with this we've got the texture going around the way that we want now let's say for example the sand that's kind of coming here and it looks like it's kind of going that way and we don't want it to be going that way this is where we can go in and select that particular shell and I can, I can rotate that around so that the sand is more, it's going in alignment with what the front of the product is doing. And this is just a, you know, the user, your choice, how you want to set that up. Um, so in this case, it's fine. Uh, then I can run the, oops, I can run the command again, select everything, modify and layout. So it's going to repack it, and because I have rotation turned off, it's not going to rotate that shell. It's going to keep the rotation as I want. It just tries to squeeze everything into into view correctly. Um, so that's that's a, an, an overview, sort of in detail, of how to get the the textures running. You can see now. Just delete this guy here. Close my window. Um, we just use like four tools or so to um, lay out the UVs and get the scaling correct and um, just manually orienting the UV so that the flow of any texture you put on this now is going to be going in the in the right direction uh, and that's that's really important to getting a really nice look on your on your models then you can change lighting and say no lights or lighting and flat lighting so we can see it a little bit better just the texture so for now, if we were to bring this into object into Brio, um, the texture would be set up, the UVs are set up correctly so that anything you apply would be oriented in a, in a nice and um, pleasant way. So thanks, uh, that's the end of this um, short video.